What's up, y'all, man? It's y'all's chosen one up in here. You know what I'm saying? We will continue in the great book of Jasher. We're on chapter 39. Uh, this is X-Men, the real origins. And this is your boy, man. Y'all's chosen one, man. Doing it again. I hope you guys are finding, are finding this exciting. And just getting a, a look at... You know, what we could be as people. You know, because anything is possible, you know, anything is possible. I think that there's things on this planet that we have yet to see and we have yet to find out. And goodness, if God, if y'all want to make people super, superhuman, he could do that. If there are giants on the earth, it can be. He can create anything, man. And we have yet to really find out what the Yah's creation was and what these Nephilim really did when it came to Earth. Anyway, we are on chapter uh, 39. We're on verse 40, uh, 40, 44, I believe. Could be 45 or 40. We'll start with 44. And Jacob and his sons were still at the entrance of the city below the first wall. And they were not able to draw their bow against the inhabitants of the city. And they could not be seen by them being upon the second wall. All right. So they couldn't be seen and they, were, and they weren't able to draw their bow. And Dan and Judah, when they could no longer bear the stones and arrows that fell upon them from the second wall, they both sprang unto the second wall near the people of the city. And when the people of the city who were upon the second wall saw that, Dan and Judah had come to them upon the second wall. They all cried out and descended below between the walls. So they are actually going toward uh, the other sons, you know, because Dan and Judah, you know, they're getting pelted. But, you know, they couldn't bear it anymore. And they came toward them on the second wall. And these people descended. And Jacob and his sons heard the noise of the shouting from the people of the city. And they were still at the entrance of the city, and they were anxious about Dan and Judah, who were not seen by them, they being upon the second wall. And Nephtali went up with his wrath, excited might, and sprang upon the first wall to see what caused the noise of shouting, which they had heard in the city. And Ishakar and Zebulon drew nigh to break the doors of the city, and they opened the gates of the city and came into the city. And he was like, what's up? Yeah, we up in here now. And Abdali leaped from the first wall to the second and came to assist his brothers. And the inhabitants of Gaash, who were upon the wall, seeing that Naphtali was the third who had come up to assist his brothers, they all fled and descended into the city. And Jacob and all his sons and all their young men came into the city to them. And Judah and Dan and Naphtali descended from the wall into the city and pursued the inhabitants of the city. And Simeon and Levi, see these two always together, were from without the city and knew not that the gate was open. And they went up from there to the wall and came down to their brothers into the city. And the inhabitants of the city had all descended into the city. And the sons of Jacob came to them in different directions. And the battle waged against them from the front and the rear. And the sons of Jacob smote them terribly and slew about 20,000 of them. Men and women, not one of them could stand up against the sons of Jacob. 20,000. Yes, yes, you heard me say that right. 20,000 against the sons of Jacob. And the blood flow, flowed plentifully in the city. And it was like the brook of water. And the blood flowed like the brook to the outer part of the city. And reached the, the desert of Beth Corin. 300, man. This is like. 300, Dragon Ball Z, all of them together, man. These sons of Jacob taking them out. And when the Most High comes back, man, he's going to use the, the sons of Jacob again, being us Israelites, as his tools, as his weapons of war, along with the, the Malachim and their chariots. And the people of Beth Koran saw at a distance the blood flowing from the city of Gaash. And about 70 men from amongst them ran to see the blood. And they came to the place where the blood was. 
And they followed the track of the blood and came to the wall of the city of Gaash. And they saw the blood issue from the city. And they heard the voice of crying from the inhabitants of Gaash, for it ascended up into heaven. And the blood was continuing to flow abundantly like a brook of water. And this is where they get it from, man. This is where you get it from. This is where your cartoon animators and stuff get this stuff from, man. Movie makers. When they make these epic movies, this is where they get it from. And all the sons of Jacob were still smiting the inhabitants of Gaash and were engaged in slaying them till evening. About 20,000 men and women and the people of Corin said, Surely this is the work of the Hebrews, specifically Hebrews. For they are still carrying on war in all the cities of the Amorites. And those people hastened and ran to Beth Corin, and each took his weapons of war. And they cried out to all the inhabitants of Beth Corin, who also girt on their weapons of war to go and fight with the sons of Jacob. And when the sons of Jacob had done smiting the inhabitants of Gash, they walked about the city to strip all the slain. And coming in the innermost part of the city, and further on, they met three very powerful men. And there was no sword in their hands. And these are powerful men. You see... The, now see, you see these Hebrews, they just destroyed 20,000 20, plus men and women. And you got three of these dudes with no weapon in their hand and ready to stand up against them. So, it's got to be something about these Amorites, man. And the sons of Jacob came up to the place where they were and the powerful men ran away. Ah, they ran away. And one of them had taken Zebulon. Ah, but one of them took Zebulon. I think it's like in one of those movies, um, I don't know, Prometheus, when he was a giant, he was like taken away, I don't know, I could be wrong, but who who he saw was a young lad and of short stature, so Zebulon was short, and with his might, dashed him to the ground, so so this, this man, this giant, probably half giant, took Zebulon and dashed him to the ground with all his strength. And Jacob ran to him with his sword, and Jacob smote him below his loins with the sword. He cut him at his loins, and cut him in two. And the body fell upon Zebulon. And the second one approached and seized Jacob to fell him to the ground. And Jacob turned to him and shouted to him, while Simeon and Levi ran and smote him on the hips with the sword and, and fell him to the ground. And the powerful man rose up from the ground with wrath excited might. And Judah came to him before he had gained his footing and struck him upon the head with his sword and his head was split. And he died. He split his wig, man. He split his wig. You ever see Wu-Tang and all the time about splitting your wig? That's seriously splitting your wig. And the third powerful man, seeing that his companions were killed, ran from, ran from before the sons of Jacob and the sons of Jacob pursued him in the city. And whilst the powerful man was fleeing, he found one of the swords of the inhabitants of the city. He picked it up, turned to the sons of Jacob, and fought them with that sword. And the powerful man ran to Judah to strike him upon the head with the sword. And there was no shield in the hand of Judah. And whilst he was aiming to strike him, Naphtali hastily took his shield and put it to Judah's head. And the power and the sword of the powerful man hit the shield of Naphtali, and Judah escaped the sword. <laughs> so Judah always finds himself in predicaments, man. And Simeon and Levi ran upon the powerful man with their sword, and struck at him forcibly with their swords. And the two swords entered, entered the body of the powerful man and divided it in two lengthwise. And the sons of Jacob smote the three mighty men at that time. Together with all the inhabitants of Gaash, and the day was about to decline. And the sons of Jacob walked about Gaash and took all the spoil of the city, even the little ones and women. They did not suffer to live. They killed the men. They killed the men, women, and so these were definitely giants, man. And the sons of Jacob did Gaash as they had done to Sartan and Shiloh. Like I said. Just like when Caleb and Joshua went throughout when the Israel, Israelites was in the wilderness, and the Most High told them to took them all out. These Amorites, some of these Amorites, these people right here, they took them all out. Some cities they did spare, 
But these particular people, they took them all out. The men, women, and children because their seed was like was corrupt. Their seed was definitely corrupt. All right, this is your boy, Yah's chosen one, man. I hope you enjoyed that one, man. That was really exciting. And uh, I hope you're getting a visual in your brain as you uh, read this, man, and just seeing what these brothers are doing, man. You know, and one day we'll have those powers too. But, you know, you just got to live right, man, to see the day. You know, every day is a good day, man. When you can read things like this and see what you're meant to be and what you're capable of, then there's nothing in this world that can stop you, man. All right. Shalom.